Hi everyone and welcome! My name is Javana Padilla and I am going to be showing you how I created these images in my home. I hope you enjoy! So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open Photoshop Lightroom and once that opens I will show you some more. It's going to take a little while to open so I'm going to fast forward this part. So the version of Lightroom that I use is Lightroom 5. Um, I use it in Adobe uh, Creative Cloud. So I pay a monthly subscription fee of $9. If you want to go get more information, just visit the Adobe website. I bought it in the photography package, so it's Photoshop and Lightroom in one package. And it's $9.99, I believe, a month. So now I'm just opening the Lightroom. And once you open it, it'll show you um, on the left-hand side your... your um, folders and then you select the folder that you want and then once you want to start editing it you will click that develop tab tab I'm sorry on top and then all your um, editing will be on your right hand side um, for these images I did like how they came out um, straight out of camera so I'm gonna do basically almost nothing to them if anything now I shoot in burst mode so I have a lot of images I can work with. A good way to uh, filter through those images is picking them. I just press the uh, P key on my keyboard to select an image and then um, it'll make a, its own private collection which will be the flagged collection. I just went to the drop down menu on the right hand side right underneath where your development tools are and um, just select flag and it'll only show you the ones that you've selected that you want from you know from your uh, from your folder so now I'm gonna show you my settings I had it at ISO 640 I was using a 35 millimeter lens um, I was at f 2.5 and I believe I was shooting at 1 500 of a second um, believe that's what it says and so the reason why I had my ISO up so high is because my room is kind of dark and I wanted to keep my shutter speed really really high just because um, with newborns or with younger children they do often uh, move around a lot and they will fidget and you don't really want a blurry image for this so um, I suggest keeping it up above 1 2 50th of a second um, I mean if your ISO can be pushed pretty far then that's best than um, sacrificing your aperture or your um, shutter speed. So keep in mind that this will vary from camera to camera and um, your quality might be different so um, just play with your camera and see what settings best fit you. My white balance I believe I just had it on Calvin. Um, I can't see exactly what it was but it was in the 5100 range I believe um, which is standard when you're doing um, people's skin tones so um, I shoot Calvin I don't know what you guys would like to shoot you can shoot um, auto white balance and then just fix it in post if you really want to do that um, it's really up to you so just figure out what you like and just shoot that way Another good thing to mention that I totally forgot is that I shoot raw. I don't shoot JPEG. I don't shoot at all in JPEG actually. So um, whenever I shoot raw, I can actually go in and change the white balance. That's the best thing about shooting uh, raw is that you can change everything. You can uh, actually save your images a lot more than uh, if you would shoot JPEG because raw is just a raw file and you can uh, bring back some of that um, highlights you can push your darks without getting too much grain um, if you want you can look up the difference on Google I mean of raw and JPEG so these are the two images that I'm going to be um, editing today so you can see my metadata there it's shot exactly the same I believe I mean it's the same light so I wouldn't imagine me changing it too much um, even if I am on the other side, because we're using a curtain on the window, it kind of distributes the light evenly. You don't have any of those harsh lines. It's kind of just bouncing it back in. Um, 
So to what I'm doing now is I am going to export these two images. I just selected these two. And then to export, I use um, export to specific folder. And then I create my own folder onto my desktop. And then that way it'll always export to my desktop. It's easy to, you know, get to. It's not super overly complicated where I'm clicking a bunch of files and trying to look for it in some like Narnia type place on my computer. It's just right there. So I also close out uh, Lightroom because it drives me crazy that my Photoshop lags so bad whenever I um, I have both running. So I just close out Lightroom. I mean, I don't need it right now. So then I go in and I open my images. So when I open my images, I just select the folder and then select the, the two images that I want that I just showed you. So I'm selecting that one and that one. And then we just click open and it'll open it as two separate tabs. Um, I know there's people that like working side by side if you're trying to create the exact same look. You can pull off one of the tabs and it'll just um, kind of work like if you're playing, or not playing, sorry, if you're working on a, like, uh, browsing the internet, you know, it'll create two tabs, but you can see them both simultaneously. That's exactly what it'll do here. Um, but I like working um, in tabs just so it's not so cluttered, um, but I mean, it's up to everyone. And then here I'm just using the brush and um, kind of fading out that um, background where you can see the wipes and the uh, and the blanket. So and that wasn't good enough for me, obviously, because it didn't make it perfect. So I'm going in with the clone tool and I'm just going to um, try to make it look natural, I guess, and not too too fake. You know, try not to show off the fact that we're cloning it. So I use the patch tool, the cloning tool, and the brush in that opposite order. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just flatten that, I believe. Sorry if you can hear my baby in the background. That's that little dude. So now I'm just going to close all my actions that I left open accidentally. Please ignore that. I am an action junkie and I love collecting actions. It's it's a bad habit. I know. I know. So make sure your background is selected. Obviously, this is the first action you're going to run, so it is already going to be selected. And when you try to run another one of these um, fades by um, Aaron Toll in the paint box collection, um, you have to select the background every time and then you press play. And that, that's the only way it'll work just because they don't layer on top of each other. You have to keep selecting the background, which is not a big task I mean you just select it and just run it and basically it but um, I do like to brush it off my um, subjects just so I get that I don't lose contrast I don't lose any um, you know details and I keep their skin tone because um, the sh the shot out of camera is actually pretty good on skin tone I think I nailed it and that's in the camera so I didn't have to edit too much. In, I mean, I didn't even edit in Lightroom. You guys saw. And that's the beauty of RAW. Let's say I would have, you know, like totally botched the color. Then I could have gone back and just fixed it, which is good. So now I'm just blending that out. Just trying to get rid of any harsh lines. Get back some of that detail in the blanket. You know, just play around with it. See, see where your hand takes you, basically. And, uh... I mean, none of your images have to be exactly the same. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it's just a fade, honestly. It's just kind of just to set the creaminess. And uh, I like to do this first just because um, this is my main thing that I'm trying to achieve while I'm editing is to get that, like, nice blend. So um, I try to get it out of the way first. And then I'll work on, you know, like editing like skin or editing you know all that stuff I do last anyway just because those are like final detail kind of things and sometimes if you do them first it will not look as sharp as you wanted it to initially so yeah I mean that's just the way I do it so now I'm just gonna go ahead and flatten that because I'm pretty happy with it and I'm just gonna 
keep that as a um, snapshot just in case, you know, something goes horribly, horribly wrong. So um, I was actually using a receiving blanket, and I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's the one that they sell at Target with all the whales that's, like, adorable. But I had to turn it inside out because I couldn't find my wraps at the time. Yeah, so you got to do what you got to do. And so he was also wearing a shirt that had a little graphic on it. So I'm just going to get rid of that too. Um, I mean, it's just a little distracting, so I just want to get rid of it. Yeah. Got to zoom in there. Get rid of all those little distracting things. And then just a heads up, um, the Joann's fabric that I got, um, which I think is called Fashion Fur, is, uh, it lets go of a lot of hair, so I'm just checking for hairs. Um, if you're working with newborns and this, um, they will want to tug at it. And, uh, it just, it, it's not a fun time. That's the only bad thing about it. They will tug at it and stuff, and it'll get all over, like, the wet spots of their face. You know, like, their lips or their moist hands. So, uh, what I do is I just brush it beforehand. I mean, I didn't in this specific, um... Uh, time <laughs> because it was oh my gosh this session was just so you don't want to hear about my problems <laughs> two boys under under one it's 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 chaotic it's chaotic to say the least so now <laughs> back to photography now I'm just gonna run lift it's from the same uh, set by Aaron Toll and it is amazing it's kind of like a warmish um, I don't want to say rose because it's not really rose, but it definitely has like a golden tint to it, like a rose gold tint to it, and uh, I love it. I think it's like perfect for newborns. It gives them that little warm, you know, oh man, I don't know what it is. It just, it looks so, I don't think ethereal is the right word, but it just looks so sweet. I guess that's what I'm going for. It just looks really, really sweet, like newborn should look. So I'm just going to brush a little bit off from the uh, Enough layer, which uh, makes it a little bit more poppy. And then I'm just going to play with the action. So like any other action, just, you know, tweak it to taste just because, you know, one... Just because I'm editing it this way doesn't mean that it's always going to be working the same for everyone. And then now I just run the Subdue Red Remover and the um, Skin section. I find that this action works perfectly for, you know, overly red babies or, you know, my boys who happen to have this really weird genetic thing and their noses are red because God knows why. I don't know if it's for my husband or for me. I'm not really sure, but they have red noses. Oh, well, this action helps it and it doesn't make them look like zombies, you know, like depleting them of all color. Um, one thing to note is um, avoid this at all costs from lips and cheeks just because those are naturally already pink. So if you take that away, they'll look not so cute. They'll kind of look like little zombie babies and we don't want that. So a little goes a long way with this action. And uh, so I think I am going to run a little bit of skin smoothening by Sarah Beth Photography because I love her actions and I love her skin smoothening action. If you see my other videos, you know how obsessed I am. Obsessed is probably slightly, you know, not the word we're looking for, but hey, it's there. And uh, it's a little bit more than obsessed because those actions are amazing. And so I'm just going to run this all over his skin, avoiding any um, lashes, any wrinkles, any, uh, any, basically any details that I don't want super smooth. And then I still am going to, you know, make sure that this is at a very low opacity because you don't want to remove all the newbornness, you know, like the flaky skin and stuff like that. Or, you know, their little newborn pimples, which is, you know. It's not even newborn acne. It's those little pimples that they get on their nose that I think are adorable. Oh, man, newborns are just so cute. Especially when they're yours. Then you're just like, oh, I gotta keep you? Okay, cool. So just make sure you're brushing this at a very low, low opacity to make sure you keep that. All the little details. And then I just use the backslash key to see where I've painted it and how much I've painted on. And then I just hit the backslash key again and it gets rid of the mask and then I'm just gonna flatten it because I like what it's done so far 
and I'm going to close that up and I think I'm going to go to my uh, Greater Than the Gatsby newborn set. And let's go ahead and open that one up. I'm telling you guys, action hoarder, I swear, I'm sorry. I should really film more of <laughs> just hand editing so you guys can learn. But I just, ugh. Especially for these, like if I know that I need something, oh, I'll just use actions. But um, the Darken and Sharpen Lashes from the Newborn Necessities. Um, and it's under the retouch section. It's like the first section. And I'm using it at very low opacity and just, just to pop those lashes a little bit, as you can see. It just sharpens them just a tad. And then it only like selects the black in your photo, so it's perfect for lashes. And it's, you know... If you're trying not to botch the image, it's really good. Um, so I like that. And I'm just going to flatten. And I did that already. So now I'm going to go down and go to Paint on Sharp. And I will use this for the lips mostly. And then I'm going to... Once I do, I do the lips, um, just make sure that you, know, you don't paint this on the skin too much. Because it will like make your skin look like plastic almost so I do it on the nose like very little on the nose like on the tips and then the inner corners of the eyes just to make them pop a lot more and that's a really cool trick is just painting it on the inner corners since they're you know you kind of catch light there and I'm painting a little bit on the hand and I'm going to lower the opacity a lot and I'm going to go on around the bonnet and the hair just where I see that it's still in focus just to make it pop a little bit more and this is a very heavy-handed um, action, so, you know, make sure that you're keeping it somewhat realistic looking. Just like any other action, just don't go too overboard. A little bit goes a long way. So, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Just make sure it's, you know, realistic. So, let's go ahead and flatten. Okay, cool. Now let's see how far we've gotten so let's go to our history and take another snapshot and then um, let me turn this to the side so you can see and this is our before you know it's a good image and then we get our fade which did a lot and then our action for the base and our fine-tuning and editing you know the spots and all that so you know very I want to say it's minimal editing, it's just like the bases, and we got a pretty good image out of it. So now with this one, we're going to duplicate the layer, and we're going to press Command J. And the way I save the other one, like super fast, is I just press Command S, you know, just standard uh, save quick key. And uh, that was about it. I mean, it just saves. Um, I just save it as JPEG too. So when I am doing cloning, I try to make sure that I'm not, you know, like, selecting exactly the same spot like as you can see up above on the right hand side it's just it looks like the exact same pattern and I'm gonna go in and fix that in a little bit but this this takes quite a bit so I'm just gonna fast forward um you know if you have something that extends further and you can you know make it look good that way do that because this this kind of this is just tedious and it's unnecessary if you have a long enough you know fabric or something So now I'm actually going to go in with a brush tool and just kind of brush color back on because, I mean, it really doesn't look that realistic, I guess. So we're going to fade it out and just see how that looks. And we're going to try to make it, or avoid making it looking too, too fake. And I'm going to create a mask on that just so I can brush it off like where I feel like it already had a really nice texture before and it didn't need all that you know cloning and stuff and again whenever you make a a, a mask a layer mask you're gonna press that uh, that little layer button that I did and the way I invert it is command I but or control I on your PC um, but I didn't invert it at all I just wanted to brush it off and then uh, white reveals and black conceals. So uh, since I was on a white layer, 
the black was taking it off. It's kind of like, you could have used the eraser tool. I mean, there's like a thousand ways to do it, but I like doing it this way. And we're going to run the black and white mat. I'm going to take away. Eh. I'm just going to tweak it. Let's see what I like. Hmm. Okay, so if you don't like the way a certain action looks, you can actually open up the action. Since actions are just recorded layers that you're creating, um, you can edit them completely. And that's what I'm doing here. As you lift the um, darks, it's going to push them up. If you're dragging them down, it's going to make them down, like, you know, go down. This is like your exposure, basically. And you could just, you do whatever you want to the image that way. So it's like a unique action for you. And I actually like the way it looks in color, but I'm not going to do this in color. And yes, I left this diaper on. I'm telling you guys, this is like a very last minute decision. <laughs> I never even took his newborn pictures. I took his um, Fresh 48, I think it's what it's called, um, at the hospital. And then um, this is at a month and a day old. So, yeah, mama's a little back and behind. So, uh, I opened layers or levels, I'm sorry. Layers, man. Okay, and then I just pushed the, uh, the blacks. And I'm just going to, uh, or, you know, trying to bring back the highlights. So, the highlights, I turn them down a little bit. And now I like that, so I'm going to flatten that. And let's see what else we can do. With this image in particular, like, I feel like you can do so much. So, it just really depends. And then in Paintbox, it has this action where you select the background. Or, you know, at this point, I'm going to flatten it because I really don't need it. Um, and then you uh, run You Pick, and then it'll give you the option. It'll pop up this uh, color picker, and you select the color that you want as your um, vignette. It's just a fade, but, you know, it, it acts. It's a, it's a fade, but it's a vignette. Like, that's what it is. That's what fades are, basically. It just fills in your image. And... You just paint it on to where you want it. You take it off where you don't. And uh, it's like a very custom uh, fade, obviously, because you picked the color. And you can do this on your own by uh, just creating a layer with a color and then brushing it on and off. So now I'm going to tweak the exposure a little bit with the curves layer. I just want it to pop a little bit more. So I'm going to brush that on just him. And I'm going to tweak it some more because the highlights are a little too high. And going to make that a little bit more intense. Okay, so let's flatten that. I'm telling you guys, you can do anything with this image. So I'm going to duplicate the layer again, and uh, I'm going to try something. So I'm going to try to see what kind of composition I can get from this. And honestly, I did this for a while. So I'm just going to fast forward through this part because it's really unnecessary. I was just trying to see if I can extend the background by um, kind of duplicating it and then dragging it down and then uh, erasing, you know, him. And it just, it didn't look that great. I didn't really care for it. I mean, it can work in another image. It just didn't work in this one. Um, so that's one tip you guys can take away from uh, my error in this editing process. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that because I didn't like it. But now I'm just going to duplicate it again. And let's see. I'm just going to show you guys different ways of like extending it. So what you can do is you can do the uh, magic 
brush tool or I forget what it's called I think it's called a magic brush tool I'm not sure and then just click the delete button and then um, select fill content to wear and it'll try to like blend I guess or fill it with what it feels like it's the best thing to do and uh, it's just basically Photoshop just manually doing the cloning tool Sorry if you can hear my toddler in the background. I swear, today's just a bad day to record. Everyone's just yelling. Alright, so, uh, after looking at this for a couple seconds, uh, do I really want to try this? Yeah, probably not. So, uh, another thing you could do is just, you know, delete it because you don't like it. <laughs> like I just did. I'm just going to go back to where I was before. And... Let's see. I mean, another thing you can do is kind of like, I guess, extend it with a similar color in the background. And uh, that looks kind of cool on itself. I mean, I'm not sure how you would want it, but I mean, I don't know. You can do a thousand things with this, but I just couldn't find one specific thing that I really liked. Honestly, like I really couldn't. Um, it just doesn't, like, I don't know, it just didn't look right. Um, but, eh, I mean, <sighs> what are you gonna do? I mean, there's a bunch of stuff you can do, and then it just all just kind of doesn't work out, so, whatever. I mean, it is, this can probably work out for you guys. That's the only reason why I'm keeping this in the video. Just so, you know, different ways you can edit and different ways you can do things. Um, like that fade that I just added on top. It was just a layer and then my brush tool. And um, I still keep noticing that I need more pop. So I'm just opening up levels and, you know, just playing with it. The middle one, what it's going to do is it's going to make it darker. The sliding on the bottom, it's just going to, if you pull it from the right to the left, it's going to create, you know, your lights darker. Um, vice versa, from the left to the right, it's going to make your darks lighter. Um, so that's a little light. So I'm going to just drag that down. This is just a trial and error at this point. You can hear my uh, my one year old singing in the background and my newborn snoring in the background. <laughs> this is real life, I, guys. Like, this is the only chance I get to do these things. And uh, okay, so now I'm doing a gradient, and I selected my layer. I made a new layer, and then I'm going. Um, I selected the gradient tool, and I'm just selecting a color, and then make sure that you're using the. Um, the transparent background with color, which is the thing I just selected on top, and you'll see it in the video, and that's kind of a cool effect. Do I like it? I'm not sure if it's for this one, but um, yeah, you can do whatever you want with these. Um, the gradient tool is a great tool if you're going to use it for, you know, creating sun flares or whatever you want. Or, you know, just like, just fading it very, very um, naturally, I guess. Instead of using the brush tool, that can be a little harsh. And then uh, you just select the colors that you want. And so, I don't know, this looks kind of cool. Uh, do I really want it, though? Ah, I'll just... Mm. So I just grouped them, and then the same way that I always group them, you just select them all, like shift, and then click the last one, and then um, command G, or control G, and it groups them and makes like a little folder of them all, and then you can just turn them on and off. I think I'm just going to attempt this again. Um, I don't know. It's, you know when you're working on an image and, I don't know, like, you know, for the beginners, maybe this hasn't happened to you guys, but you know when you're working on an image and you're like, I don't know, do I like it? Do I not like it? Do, will I like it if I do this? Will I like it if I do that? So this is really me editing in real time. Like, I just don't know what I like right now. And, um, I don't know, guys, like, just 
something about this image, like, it just keeps throwing me off. And so I'm just trying to save whatever I can about it. I mean, it looks fine, just normal. And I don't know if it's just because, you know, there's so many, like, similar patterns in it that it just looks uber fake. So I'm just trying to fix it, but it just, it just doesn't look right. I don't know what it is. This is what I struggle with. This is how this is how a five minute editing turns into like a three a.m. crying because you can't get it right and everything is just not working out. And I'm pretty sure most photographers can say this. That's happened to them at least once. And it just kills your sanity. Like you'll wake up the next morning and the image is completely different. So. Guys, I could have taken my time on this, but I mean, just for editing's sake, I think this would have turned into like a four hour long video if I would have kept doing this in real time. So all I'm going to do is change it to darken and that kind of like fixed it a little bit, but not so much to where I'm happy. And I mean, I don't know. It just, it just something, something I swear about this image. It just doesn't feel right. So basically there's a, like a thousand different kind of compositions you can make with this image, with your image actually too. Um, so that's all I'm doing here. I'm just going to be cropping, so seeing how it looks. Um, I obviously wouldn't leave that border there um, if I was printing it, but like, you know, for, you know, Facebook or something then I would just to keep it more balanced or give it like a different feel, I guess. Um, but you know, you can rotate your image, you can see how it looks. Um, obviously, at this point, I kind of noticed that, like, you know, like, the bottom needed to be trimmed up a little bit, and I'll do that later. But, you know, like, just, you can throw off the image to the side and do whatever you want. I'm just going to fast forward through this because I do, like, a different compositions, like, for, like, 10 minutes. So, I don't think we need, you know, real-time composition test. <laughs> And plus you can hear the baby grunting in the background, which is not necessary. So we're going back to the good old original that we saved it as. And uh, I'm going to open uh, curves again. I'm sorry, I was going to say levels. Curves again. And I'm just going to darken it a little bit because I feel like it wasn't moody enough for me. And I'm just going to play with this a little and see how I like it. Yeah, it's a lot moodier. I'm just going to invert it and I'm going to just paint it on the very bright spot and around the edges. All right. So that's that, flatten that. And I'm gonna crop it just a tad so it seems a little bit more balanced. So when you crop, it always uses the background layer, um, a color over here, as you can see. So you can change that out whenever you want. I really didn't care for that little band, so I'm just going to remove it. And... I'm 
I'm going to use the dropper tool and select that darker color. That's how you can select colors. And then you just press X to make sure that it's in the background. Like in the behind layer, like the back color. I thought right there looked pretty cool with the other composition. Not where I kind of left it, but like a little bit longer. Alright, so I think that's enough composition training kind of thing. Um, I'm just going to leave it as is, how it is right now. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry for the rambling. I just kind of rambled since, I mean, I know there's going to be a lot of momtographers that are going to be watching this and trying to learn. So if you can sympathize with me, sympathize. Two kids under two. Hard stuff. Especially keeping them, you know, quiet. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Bye.